Hey everyone! I'd like to give a shout out to our beautiful friend Carolyn Gimarelli, who is helping us out with guest art this week. Thank you, Carolyn! The time has come for us to talk about water. This has been one of those things that has caused some disputes in the comments and discussions ever since episode one, when I brought up Dr. Emoto, who spent his life researching water and demonstrated that by projecting love onto water and freezing the water, it would cause the water to freeze in beautiful patterns. Projecting negatively onto water caused the water to form like this, and that's a pretty dramatic difference. Emoto has tried this with many different energies and emotions. This is Beethoven, Bach, and Mozart. This is heavy metal, and this is hate. Now, the common argument from the skeptical perspective is that there was a triple blind study on Emoto's research, and several times they didn't see nearly the same results that Emoto did. Does this mean Emoto is a lying, crazy Japanese guy? Not necessarily. He seems like a pretty level-headed guy. Could it mean that the people who did the triple blind studies didn't understand what Emoto understood about water? Well, I feel like this may be more of a possibility, but this is what we're going to discuss today. Now, let's objectively look at water for a second. What do we really know about it scientifically? Well, we know that it's the most common substance on Earth. We also know that every living species of life on Earth comes from water and needs water to grow. This includes crystals too, by the way. We know that the human body is roughly 75 to 90% water, and that's quite a bit. Not just humans though, it's prevalent in all life. Without water, life could not exist on this planet. Science knows that life emerged on Earth from water, and all of our studies of the planet shows that life must have originated with water and slowly evolved outwards, growing and flowing and forming new life. But water was that original substance that it started in. They often call this the primordial soup. Water is the only element in existence that can exist in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Because of that, it's pretty much everywhere. Water doesn't just flow in oceans, lakes, and rivers, but it flows through the air. Those clouds are nothing but water. It's also in abundance in the North and South Poles. What else do we know about water? Well, it's the only element that expands when it freezes and contracts when it heats. Every other element on the planet does the opposite, which science today cannot explain. Scientists have also discovered that water is capable of creating an immense amount of pressure, either through freezing the water or even in life. In a seed, for example, it reaches 400 atmospheres of pressure at the point of germination. This is why a plant shoot can break through asphalt with ease. Why does water have the highest surface tension of all liquids? Why is it that it's the most powerful solvent on earth? And why is water able to rise against gravity through the trunks of giant trees against thousands of atmospheres of pressure? Want to know the truth? The truth is that there are a lot of unanswered questions about water and what it is that we have absolutely no logical conclusive answers to. This is an absolutely beautiful thing because admitting that we know nothing allows us to open up to learn new things about what it is that we want to know. In this situation, water. That's exactly what many scientists around the world have started doing and it's led to some miraculous revelations. The following clips are from a secret documentary I found about water floating around on the depths of YouTube. It keeps being taken down, I wonder why. As it records information, water acquires new properties, yet its chemical composition remains unchanged. So their theory was the chemical composition of the water is important. Now the sensational news is that that is nonsense. The structure of water is much more important than the chemical composition. The structure of water means how its molecules are organized. We can see how water molecules join together into groups. These are called clusters. Scientists came up with the idea that these clusters work as memory cells of a certain sort, in which water recalls the whole history of its relationship with the world as if on magnetic tape. People don't think when you turn on the light, the water is changing. When you turn on the electric field from the power lines, the water may change. So that is the direction of research. Water, of course, remains water, but its structure, like a nervous system, reacts to any irritation. Modern instruments have made it possible to record the fact that within each of water's memory cells, there are 440,000 information panels, each of which is responsible for its own type of interaction with the environment. If you consider a cluster as a group of specific molecules, um, then it can survive only a short amount of time. 
But if you consider it as a structure whereby molecules can leave and other molecules come in, the cluster can last effectively for a very long time. The stability of the cluster structures confirmed the hypothesis that water is capable of recording and storing information. It may be the single most malleable computer which can, that it's like a computer memory. It's the memory of information. We must know how it is arranged. It is like the alphabet. If I give you the alphabet, you don't know a word, you don't know a letter, you don't know a sentence. So the molecular structure is the alphabet of water. And you must make a sentence out of water, and you can change a sentence. See, it's not just Emoto who's doing research on water, but many scientists, especially a lot of Russian scientists too, are hammering out amazing water discoveries every day. Emoto kind of led the way publicly when it came to the crystallized water freezing though, which opened up many avenues of public discussion. Now that we've looked at the light side of things, it's time to take a look at the darkness. Remember, everything is energy and all energy can be transmuted from light to dark, or vice versa. This is how water flows naturally in nature. Doesn't that look happy? Water flows and curves wherever it needs to go. However, water makes a different trip when it goes into our homes. It goes like this, lots and lots and lots of right angle turns and hard edges. If you've read the Emerald Tablets, you might remember Thoth describing in Tablet 8 the story of how he existed in the realm of curves, and it was amazing, but then he ventured into the realm of angles and was chased down by demons. Now, the story itself, I feel, cannot truly be comprehended from our current level of consciousness, but yet it has a striking connection to how we damage our water through our technology. This doesn't flow, it's not healthy. The natural structure of water is broken apart with every turn. On an even greater scale, it is known that most cities work on a closed loop system. This means that the water we use is continually recycled over and over. The water passes through aggressive chemical purification and powerful filters. Then, the water returns to our homes, still remembering the chemicals and violence it was subjected to. Even worse than that, though, is the informational pollution that the water accumulates as the water flows down miles of long pipes through thousands and thousands of homes and apartments. We are polluting our water spiritually, and it's happening on a huge scale. The water adopts all of the stress, fear, and anger in our lives. By the time it gets to our bodies, it is not in very good shape at all, and it's not benefiting us by drinking it. Now, I realize that that's pretty dark, but the most important thing to remember is that everything is energy and all energy can be transmuted. So let's talk about that. What are some practical solutions for both cleansing our own water and getting cleaner and healthy, happier water into our bodies? First, I believe that this is another one of those many uses of organite. If we throw organite into our sewers or just keep them near the pipes in our houses, that will begin to drastically alter and begin a positive transmutation of the negative energy in the water into something more fantastic. Second, make yourself some spirit water. Since we discussed spirit water and crystals part two, many individuals have written in to tell how they are no longer drinking coffee in the morning because they are putting crystals in their water before they go to bed and having a healthy, fresh glass of charged and vitalized water before their day instead. By bringing that healthy energy into your being, you're able to use that frequency and make yourself healthier and think clearer and bring more high frequency and happiness into your life and all those around you, which in turn will spread more love. If our ancestors were able to make healing water using silver jars, What's to stop us from doing it too? Third, I think it would be amazing to do a weekly water meditation. Every Sunday, I'm going to go into meditation and put my intention and focus on healing and rejuvenating the water of the planet. It doesn't have to be at a synchronized time. We'll just say at some point on Sundays. You can work on transmuting the water in your body or in the water flowing through your house or for the whole planet. It's up to you and every meditation will count because you're setting your intention and projecting your consciousness that which you desire. And finally, be grateful for the water you drink. Here's another clip I'd like to show you. Dr. Emoto has conducted another interesting experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month, he said, thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one, he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. 
The rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto thinks that this experiment provides an important lesson, especially with regard to how we treat children. We should take care of them, give them attention, and converse with them. Indifference does the greatest harm. I tell some dreamy story, but almost practice. Water creates so many structures that life cannot exist without. Water forms the DNA helix. Water also forms the structures of proteins. Our bodies cannot work without water. Every seed, every embryo begins in water. It is the surrounding water in the embryo that gives life and brings the nutrition that is necessary to facilitate growth in that life. Our earth is a giant container of water from which every form of life arose. Every living thing is essentially a container of water. Just like a piece of art that has not yet been sculpted by an artist in a clump of clay, within the water contains every infinite possibility for life within it. Water brought to life a pre-existing conception of life, but for any life to begin, there first must have been an impulse. Every species of living being constantly strives toward its own perfection, and it all came from the same original consciousness, the same source. The final thing I want to bring up before we conclude this week's discussion is a very cosmic analogy. Without water, life on Earth could not exist. The only other element that is absolutely necessary for life is the sun. Without the sun, we could not have life. And in a poetic and beautiful way, this is the cosmic father and mother of life on Earth. Think about it. In biological reproduction, you need a man and a woman. The male provides the seed, and the female provides the egg. And together, they do a dance and form new life. The sun is the male aspect, bringing the cosmic life force energy to Mother Earth. Mother Earth is, of course, the mother providing the egg where the new life will grow. And water could be likened to the placenta from which all life grows in. The surface of the earth where life grows is the womb for the life on the planet. As above, so below. Mother, father, child equals earth, sun, new life. And that's us, as well as all of the animals and wildlife and crystals and everything living on this planet. Modern science and society is relatively skeptical to say the least of the messages from water. But when you look at it as a whole, I feel that Emoto's work is just scratching the tip of the iceberg when it comes to understanding water. To look at these frozen water crystals and brush it off as a pseudoscience is incredibly dismissive of a much larger understanding about what water is and what role it plays in the evolution of life itself. It is life. It is you. <laughs>